All right, so let's get started. Call the meeting to order. It is 7.17 according to my computer clock. Um, public comment for items not on the agenda. Kate, are you here for uh, just to listen or did you have something you wanted to bring up? Um, I'm here for the Historic Preservation um, Commission, but I, uh, I've just, I figured I would come and listen to the beginning because I've never been to a meeting. Sorry. Oh. Ah, and you brought um, your dog. Thank you. This is my dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's no public comment. Um, additions, changes to the agenda. All right. I'm not sure where, you don't see Toby in the waiting room, do you, Cliff? You're on mute, Cliff. Toby just came in. I'll bring him in. Oh, he dropped off again. I think he's having connectivity issues. Oh, OK. No, uh, Cliff, I hit admit. Got Toby, a backseat driver. No, Cliff, Cliff, I admitted him. I understand. I'm making sure he can hear us. Toby, are you there? Oh, he's connected. His audio is not connected yet. Now he's on. Toby, hey. are you there? Hey, Toby. Hello. Hi, it's snowing. Yeah, what else is new? I know. <laughs> Lovely. So, um, Toby, you want to, I thank you for checking with um, Doug Newton and the state. So you just want to lay it out, what you found out. I think we're all on the same page, but I just want to make sure we're, we are for the guardrails. Yep. Um, so instead of using concrete barriers, we can just use a doubled or nested guardrail across the span. And that solves the issue. Um, so that's essentially, originally the plan was just regular guardrail across the whole thing. Because of the shallow depth over the culvert, <clears throat> we couldn't do that. So now we'll have doubled or tripled um, guardrail to cover the distance. And the associated costs, are they all grant eligible, Toby? Toby? Well, I think it actually be. So the, the thing about the grant is we do an estimate. They give us a, a, um, a grant for what we estimate. If we go over, there are addendums that we file and we get paid for the overage if it happens because we can't always hit the number on the on the dollar. If we're under, um, <clears throat> they give us a little bit less. So so essentially everything is covered. There's really no um, any real change in other than we just do 10% of whatever the whole project is. Okay. Oh, hi, Scott. Hi, Tobin. Um, and then Toby, you had you had a, sent us an email with a couple of other projects. Do you want to just explain what they are? Yeah, the first one is repaving the um, the pavement from Route 14 to the school. That's a Class Two grant. Um, that's just an overlay, which would just cover over the existing pavement, and uh, so that would be the Class Two grant for the year. And the structures grant. There's a culvert on Loose Road on the really sharp corner at the bottom of the hill. Um, <clears throat> we're actually having some trouble with that right now because the, the sidewall is collapsing from the road because it's such a steep bank. Is that so, the project you tried to, that we didn't get the grant for, or was it last year? Nope, not, not at all. This is all brand new. Okay. So essentially the um, putting together a grant that would put in a, an extension on the culvert or replace it entirely depending on this, the uh, hydraulic study, which would require um, if it needs a bigger hole. <clears throat> it's a four foot culvert right now. The culvert itself is not in, it's not rusting or collapsed, but um, it needs a head wall and probably needs a footer wall. And it needs to be longer so that we can uh, have a less steep slope on either side of the road. And what's the, what's the um, budget amount and what's the, what money do we have to come up with, if any? And is it, and if we do, what is it in the budget? Um, well, ag again, as you remember, that, that <clears throat> our work is already paid for by the by the regular budget. So any work we do <clears throat> um, is stuff and time that we've already paid for. We do get reimbursed 
um, I believe in structures, it's 80%. So 80% of the cost of the entire project is paid for by the state. Okay. And so our percentage is 20%, but that can be time and labor? Well, that's how they calculate it, but we've already, we're already, you know, if the guys are working for a whole week or whatever it is to do the job, <clears throat> they're already getting paid out of our regular budget. It's not an additional money. The difference is that we get reimbursed for all the expenses and 80% of that work. Okay, and then, so, and then there was another project, I think, too. Nope. That's it? That's just that? Those two for FY21? Two. Yep. Okay, anybody have any questions or whatever for Toby? Alfred? Uh, no, I'm good. Okay. And just while we're on the issue of road stuff, um, Oh gosh, I can't remember what her name is right now, but she works with, she's working with PMD Andrea on the East Calais Gully stormwater project. And um, they're getting ready to send out the scope of work document and then they'll do an RFP. And a woman, like I said, I can't remember her name right now, but I think I sent you an email, Alfred, just letting you know that she was gonna be in East Calais tomorrow morning at nine just looking around okay so yeah the emails were kind of scattered it didn't it wasn't really telling me when it was going to be yeah it's, Jessica. yes that's it jessica lord 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 Addis or something her last name i mean there isn't okay. anything for us there's nothing for us to do right now i just wanted you alfred to be aware that this woman was going to be out there looking at the project because um i just think you should know okay Okay, yeah, I can pop in there, take a look at nine o'clock, just yeah. introduce myself and see if there's any questions that she has. Yeah, okay. And I think that that work isn't really going to happen until FY22 because they have right. to do the scope of work, do the RFPs, all that stuff. So, um, and I believe our share of doing that was just maybe the town doing some digging and things like that. That was all part, that was what the town was gonna to have to do. Right, right. Well, they're just doing engineering right now. That's right. all they're doing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, anything else for the, anything else for roads, guys? Um, nope, I don't think so. We're trying to grade when we can. Today was a rainy day, so we didn't grade, but uh, and we are going to try to put the, start putting sand up this week. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, trying to keep up with it. Yeah. Things getting back to normal more or less. Yeah. Um, so the update on the budget, we've got about $71,000 left in the budget before the end of the year. Um, and I just put in for a reimbursement on the paving on uh, Moscow woods for uh, roughly $24,000. So if that comes in before the end of the year, we'll literally have about 90,000 before the end of the year to spend in the next month and a half. Yeah, so there might be some surplus. All right. We'll do Everybody. what we can do. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Alfred and Toby, very much. Okay. Okay, so are you done with me for the night? I, I, I think we are. Have a nice night. Okay. Okay, very good. Thank uh, you. Bye, for me. Bye now. Here. Thanks, Toby. Yep, yeah, good. See Thanks. You, All right. Um, up next, Nick. Nick, what's going on with emergency management? Hello. Thanks for uh, getting me on the agenda. Sure thing. Um, just a, a couple of updates. We received notice from the Regional Planning Commission. Uh, that Vermont Emer Emergency Management approved the Callis Local Emergency Management Plan that we submitted a, a few weeks ago for 2020. And uh, that having that approved by the state is good because it, it's a condition for receiving funds, Vermont funds from ERAF, the Emergency and Relief and Assistance Fund. 
So and is that, that and is that where we Nick is that where we submit or log um, that portal to put documents in for reimbursement? Is that the same thing? No, uh, that's well. FEMA pays seventy five percent of the reimbursement requests that we make, and then these um, ERAF funds from Vermont can pay. Um, typically, over, well, for Cal, it's 12.5% of the remaining uh, 25%. So, no, that's a, that's a separate deal. So, but in other words, we could get, hopefully, almost reimbursed if we come up with this $3,300 um, mark. Yeah, so I'll talk about that. The, the, the FEMA portal, uh, we got set up last week for re requesting reimbursement for covid related expenses. Uh, Sandra is registered as the primary point of contact for that. Uh, Judy or whoever the town clerk is at any point in time is, is listed as the secondary point yeah. of contact. Yep. Um, yes, it's a minimum for 2020, it's a minimum of $3,300 in expenses uh, in, order to, um, in order to get reimbursed. And so, of course, we need to keep track of expenses. And FEMA has uh, I just started to take a look at it, but they have specific requirements for documentation of expenses and record keeping. So it's it's more than just keeping it keeping an invoice. Yeah. Now I'm sure if it's federal, it's complicated. Yeah. And uh, so I had some uh, email with Sandra today, and um, she's. It sounds like she has done this when she, over in Worcester, so um, she knows the territory a little bit. Yeah, we're, yeah, I'm sure she probably does. Yeah. Uh, Denise, um, I sent to Katie the uh, local emergency management plan information sharing agreement um, for the select board's consideration about whether they want to participate in that. Do you want me to describe that or? Have you that already? I am. I mean, I looked over the documents. I think, you know, if we can share with other towns and help other towns and they can help us, I'm all for it. Okay. I guess um, maybe Katie's going to send that out to you then. Uh, it's, it's very straightforward and simple. It's just uh, giving the uh, Regional Planning Commission permission to share all of the information and resources that we listed on our emergency management plan with. Uh, adjacent town, nearby towns, uh, which could be helpful in in uh, mutual aid situations and sharing resources. And yeah. we've done, and we have done some of that. Not necessarily, maybe through the same process, but mm -hmm. oftentimes, you know, if East Montpelier or Woodbury has something going on, you know, we'll loan them a truck or let them use the grader, yeah. or so it's that same kind of thing, right? It's just kind of being a good neighbor. It is. Yep. And we know what they've got, and and they know what we've got because we're sharing our information. So, and this letter that you sent us um, for us to sign off on is just agreeing to that, right? It says LEPC five would like to request formal permission from your municipality to share updated LEMP information with other LEPC members and Washington County municipal officials upon request. That's basically what the letter is. And I just need approval from the board to sign off on this. Anybody have any questions, Nick, for Nick or comments? Seems pretty straightforward and I agree it's something we should share, participate in. So would you make a motion then to authorize me to sign this letter? Um, of support, which is goes back to Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. So Rosa's seconding. Yeah. Okay. Is there any further discussions, questions for Nick, comments, anything like that? Yeah. Can right. you get we everything have... you need from us? Yes. Excellent. Indeed. Yes. Yeah, so far, so good. I, and maybe Great. in six weeks or so, I could. Uh, hop back on the agenda in case there's anything moving along. Yeah, yeah, just let me know. Shoot me an email and I'm happy to put you on the agenda. Okay. And I'd like to um, just update you on this government electronic 
telecommunications service. Can we can we just vote on this motion first? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, we have to do a roll call. Rose. Aye. Sharon. Aye. Cliff. Aye. John. Aye. And I'm an aye. All right. Thank you for letting us get that done. Okay. Um, so the motion is approved. Go ahead, Nick. Uh, so the acronym is GETS, and this is, uh, so I think I mentioned last time, uh, this is priority access to landline networks when there's congestion due to uh, a national emergency uh, disaster situation or some other situation. Uh, you get queued to the front, the, the phone carrier queues you to the front of the line um, as an emergency related provider. And uh, so I did request um, that service and we did get, CALIS got approved for participation by the Department of Homeland Security. And I requested cards uh, for Toby and for each member of the select board and for- And uh, yourself, right? And for myself and Elizabeth, who's the public information officer, Judy, and the road, Alfred, um, whoever the road commissioner uh, may be. Is there, a cost for, is there a cost for that, Nick? It's no cost. Oh, we like things um, that don't cost anything. We like free stuff. Yeah, we like free stuff. <laughs> uh, you, so so how, does that, how, seen, that, how does that, how it, does that work? It works by, you get a card uh, that has, each person has a, an individual separate account with a, a separate um, passcode. So you dial a, a single universal number, no matter where you are, uh, from only from a landline. It does not work from a cell phone. And uh, put in your PIN and they queue you, they put you up, up front for, uh, so you can get your call through at least more, they say 90% of the time they can get your call through quickly. Oh, I see. So it's a PIN number or something that you enter. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm so I have I've received the cards. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess I'll mail them to you individually, and it gives gives instructions on how to use it. Um, I have um, I have prepaid stamped envelopes here from the town office. If you let Judy or if you um, send Judy and Barbara an email and drop them off at the town office, maybe with instructions. Oh. I'm sure Barbara or Judy could mail them out. Great. Okay. Um, so that's what I'll do. Thank yeah. you. And so these can be used from any landline. You validate when you get the card, uh, you validate it by making a test call. Um, then they know that you're connected. Uh, they encourage you to make test calls periodically every few months to make sure you, you know how it works and that it's working. Um, and then uh, up until recently, well, there, there's another service that can be used with cell phones, but there has always been a, a, a charge, a, a, let's see, it's a monthly charge and a per call charge, but rec very recently, the wireless carriers have suspended those charges. So now that's free. And so if um, in a different kind of emergency scenario, there might be cell service, but no landline, it's, it's less likely than the yeah. other scenario. But um, so if anyone's interested in having this, once you get, familiar with GETS, with the landline service. Uh, if you think you want to have this put on your phone, let me know and I'll, I'll we can set that up. Um, it's unlike GETS, which can be used from any, your card can be used from any landline. Uh, the wireless priority service, WPS, can only, it's assigned to your specific phone. It can't, it can't be used from any other phone. So it's a little different. Oh. No. So like if I was at my son's house in East Callis and I needed to call if they have a landline, I could still use that card. Yes. Okay. So, All right. Pretty um, cool. Wireless network is more vulnerable to disruption than landlines, I think. And um, so that's why we thought, I thought we'd start out with the landline gets card. So any questions nice about that right off? No, what a great service. Um, thinking um, my mind, is at the moment more focused on the preparedness phase of emergency management. So these in, in that in that vein. Um, and 
I just before I sign off, I was wondering who do I speak with to better understand uh, their current arrangement that CALS has for backup of computer files? RV Tech. And RV Tech. yeah. Okay. Am I right in thinking that um, there's going to be or there is a uh, external hard drive backup in the town office? Cliff, if Cliff doesn't mind, he knows a lot about all of our computer stuff. Okay, Cliff, maybe yeah. sometime I'll, I'll contact you about that. I was going to suggest, Nick, yeah, we can have a, an offline conversation. The short answer is yes, we have backup provisions in place, and we will be putting some additional uh, backups in place so that there is on there's backup on site, backup off site, and backup in the cloud. Great. All right. But RB Tech, in case you ever need to know, is our um, computer support company. All right. Yeah, they, there's a recommendation out there to um, have some backup on uh, non-electronic media, such as flash drives or hard disks. Um, but I'll talk about that with you, Cliff, later. Yeah, anytime. Just ping me when you're ready. Okay. That's it okay. for me. Thanks Great. very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nick. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Anybody Thank you, Nick. else have any? Anybody have anything for Nick? No, Before, thank you. You're welcome to thank you. You're welcome to stay. It's going to be so exciting. I'll I'll hang around for a little. I'll see what happens. All right, there you <laughs> go. Um, next up is David Healy, CV Fiber, and I did. You sent this template letter, David, and I did go in and try to put some callous stuff in there, um, but I don't know if it made it to the Google folder. Can you hear us, David? Yeah, I can hear you. I don't know whose folder, my folder or your folder? Our, uh, the select board's Google oh, Drive yeah. that we no, edited. You can, you can edit it to your heart's content. Okay. And yeah. when yeah. that gets done, should I we send it to you? Yes, please send it to me. And it'll be added to our application, which I guess is going to be quite long when we finish. I've already put about just, 25 hours into it. <laughs> oh my. So can you just, you want to just you want to just give everybody an overview yes. of what this so is? So this this opportunity to speak with you tonight came because I made a request that um, I'd like to get an endorsement from the select board to support our grant application to the Northern Border Regional Commission Economic Development Program. Um, this is a a highly competitive process, although Broadband is one of the topics that they want to finance, but it's about construction. So now I can go back to where, C, where is CV Fiber now that it's almost, it's exactly two years actually, this month. Um, in January, we hired a company to do a feasibility study with the money we got from USDA and from the Department of Public Service for a broadband feasibility study and a business plan. This week, we will be receiving the feasibility study from the consultant who have seen a draft, or I've seen a draft. And one of the requirements was, can it pay back for itself in three years, which is pretty extraordinary. But that was one of the requirements that the Department of Public Service put on the feasibility study. Um, so the consultant has been looking at routes and how to do a pilot project, where to do them. and. It's going to be about between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars a mile. Uh, it's not cheap, um, but we are confident, or they are confident, that we can do it by underwriting it. We don't believe that in the first two or three years we'll be able to serve every house, which is the goal. But the consultant is also looking at a, putting up radio, radio Wi-Fi, similar to what Cloud Alliance already has putting it so that everybody gets something if they're not on the broadband a high-speed internet they deliberately didn't look at uh, routes that had a lot of cable uh, cable but and, and the way they looked at it was some places they had to use go through areas that have cable um, so Calus is one of those weird places which has cable but then has a lot of unserved addresses so and um, so this grant application is basically a first stage to get a pilot project funded 
in which the state will, we are allowed to borrow up to $4 million from VITA, but VITA funds require a 10% match. So we're looking to try to get at least $400,000 from the Northern Border Regional Commission. So that's one project in which I've asked for this letter of support. The other project that's on the, on the horizon is the FCC is, going, is sponsoring a reverse auction for every unserved address in every census block in the country. And how would that mean? And in, in this case, Calus actually has a lot of unserved census blocks. And they'll pay up to, I think it's $4,800 per household um, as a starting point. And what a reverse auction does is if you're competing with another entity that like Consolidated Communications or Comcast and CV Fiber, the idea is you bid down the amount of money that you're willing to accept. And if you're the winning, winning bid, you have five years to connect every property in that census block. And it has to be 100-100, so it has to be fiber. And the money is paid to you over a period of 10 years. So it's, it's a pretty good deal, and we are looking to find a partner to bid on that. Uh, because we're not eligible to bid because we're not an internet service provider. The other entity that is able to bid on this is Washington Electric. So we have been talking to Washington Electric as to being a partner with us to bid on this auction. We've also asked some other providers to see if they want to be interested in teaming with us to do this auction. The third pool of money, which I think is sort of speculative at best is the uh, anticipated infrastructure money that Congress is supposed to talk about this year, which I'm not sure it's going to be talked about till next year. And even then it's unlikely, but um, or it's possible. But if they did come through with what they're talking about, uh, that amount of money that they're talking about is enough to pay for the whole network and CD5 territory. I, I don't know why I'm so skeptical, but I always find opportunities in which they say, oh, you're going to get something, and it's not. But we do know right now, even borrowing money and, um, and getting subscribers, we can actually pay off the loan. So it's not terrible. Where would that money come from? The loan? To pay, where would the money come from to pay off the loan? From rate, rate payers, people who subscribe. So depending on, you know, which speed you want to buy, it's, you know, if you use the EC fiber model in central, East Central Vermont, they charge about $75 a month up to $200 a month, depending if you're a business and want and super gigabit speeds. Um, and that's so the, you know, that's the idea is rate payers pay for it. I mean, uh, they, you know, the users pay for it. And that's that part of that survey we filled out. Correct. Where they asked if you would, and if they asked if you would if you would subscribe, right? Correct. And the other option is, you know, instead of borrowing money from Vita, is to actually solicit, you know, local residents that might want to have money and want to invest in CV Fiber and get a little bit better interest than one and a half percent or whatever it's down to now. Maybe it's even less than one percent. So that's another option that we're, we will be looking at and probably putting out some solicitation to find out if this interest. In a, um, it could be a risky investment, um, but that's also the interest that you get paid. So there's a lot of um, um, potential there for money. In the survey we did, we had over, I think it was 60% said that they would pre-subscribe, which means I think the way the question was asked was you pay for two years in advance. And we had a lot of people who said yes. So that would certainly help us uh, get the thing underwritten and going. So that's sort of a, a nutshell of where CD Fiber is. Um, yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. The legislature is wanting to do lots of things. It doesn't appear possible that the $1.25 billion that the state of Vermont got, any of that can be used for broadband. It may be able to use for wireless connections to- Now, what money, what money are you talking about? What we got because of- COVID? The state, yeah, the state got 1.25 billion for COVID-related expenses. 
Yeah, so that's the probably not what the definition for those expenses is pretty tight. I would imagine and, that that's not would not be eligible and, for this. Right. The thing that would be would be for school kids, and if you can run, yep. you know, your Wi-Fi networks on top of poles or whatever for neighborhoods that don't have service. Um, so I have data for every town in Vermont who gets who has service and who doesn't have service. Um, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And so that's what we've been using sort of to, to figure out which routes are most in need. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Um, we're meeting tomorrow night, every first Tuesday, second Tuesday of every month at the Berlin Elementary School. And um, that's gone pretty well. The legislature is, has an emergency broadband plan that they've proposed in which they've got a lot of things, uh, what I would call vapor, vapor money uh, for broadband, but they're also talking about uh, Wi-Fi and cellular extensions and cable extensions and all those kinds of things. Um, so that's, they want comments on that plan by the end of May. Um, and they have put a reverse auction idea in there for the money that doesn't exist, but they think will exist. Um, so that's that's coming up. And Congressman Welsh is on the bike partisan committee for broadband, and he's the one that's saying that there will be an infrastructure bill that this will be in. The question is whether it's going to be in this year or a future year. It depends, I guess, on who's in Congress next year. Um, and so that's sort of my update on where CV Fiber is. Um, be happy to entertain questions. And Cliff, I wonder. Cliff, I wonder if you could bring up that um, letter. I think it's in the Google folder now. The CV Fiber letter. Yep. If I can, I can open it from your email. Give me a minute. Okay. So, board members or anybody else out there in the Zoom land. <laughs> Have any comments or questions? Let me ask on the since you're there. How many people have Comcast in this Zoom meeting? I don't. One, two, three. I have Fairpoint. I have it. I'm sorry, I've I've consolidated communication. Sorry. Right. Yeah, right. But that's that's, that's, that's what I have. That's sort is of my that guess. at home? But Sharon, is that at home or at, at your office? Uh, we have Comcast in the office where I am now, and I have consolidated at home. Okay, so I think that's uh, what David, is, I think that's what David's asking is at at your residence what you have. Right, which is why I'm not there. I'm I'm where I where it actually works. <laughs> <laughs> but my, now, when you say consolidated, is that the word I have Fairpoint? That's consolidated. It's the same, right? it's the same company. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so the letter is just, you know, how to Cal is supporting the, our application for this grant money from uh, the Northern Border Regional Commission. Okay, Scott had his Scott had his hand up. Scott. Yep. Can you hear me? Okay, as they say. Yep. Uh, yeah. David, how how um, how are you going to decide where to begin on the project? Oh, Scott, you had to ask that question. <laughs> the way the way the consultant did the uh, they did six routes or proposing six routes and they based their recommendation for a pilot project on where they thought they could get the best take rate to underwrite the payment of the uh, the infrastructure so it it'll be interesting to see what the board decides if you know this they could produce you know could choose any of the other routes. My, my preference is that we go for the whole enchilada and we do all six, all six routes, of which I should just let you know that a good chunk of callus is in that. Hmm. So, okay. Including the worst section, worst served areas of callus. Which are, which are where, David? Oh, East Callus and North Callus. Yeah, okay. Um, so when do you need this letter by? 
I need this by the end of the month. I need it by uh, May. I need it in my hands by May 29th, so I can put the package together on June on Sunday. So I have to do a compiled PDF of every piece of the application. So, okay. so I don't know if better, um, but that's the date. I don't know if board members have had a chance to look at this yet. I had, like I said, I started to kind of go through it. Um, and I had a couple of questions just to start off the bat was um, our property values have remained lower than our neighbors. Yeah, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true and how we would know that. And then I, I actually, I found a couple of typos, but um, okay. I didn't focus on, I didn't focus on those right now. It says the new norm is high speed internet at every premises. Would not the word yeah. should be resident? Residents no, because we're talking about organizations and businesses and schools and everything. So the, the generic term is premises. premises. <laughs> really? Yep. Okay. I learned a new use for the word premises then. Yeah. Um, and in this, if this goes through, does that mean that, and WEX a partner, that little dish things, or I don't know what you would call them, little things would go on the top of phone um um poles. electric poles yes it could be some of that uh, to reach the basically the one that you know if it's going to cost you know twenty nine thousand dollars a mile in service areas if there's one house and a house and, and you know and there's no other houses on that road they may be serviced by a, a little thing a couple of things on top of poles yes and that would be only that would be interim that wouldn't be permanent so the idea is it would be buried fiber optic then? It'd be strung on the pole. And the reason to team with Washington Electric is that if the fiber can be strung in the electric space on WEX poles, we don't have to pay any leases. And, right. they, and Washington Electric itself is thinking of doing the fiber themselves and then leasing it to CV Fiber because they know that they are going to need fiber to everybody's home just to do management of electricity. Um, wow. And they also know that the, you know how they currently collect the um, information for the billing system? That's I don't, know, I, don't, I don't have, I don't have WEC, I have Hardwick Electric. Oh yeah, you're really lucky. Really? <laughs> no. I was going to say the power goes out just like it could go out right now because it's snowing. Yeah, no, the um, they um, their their wi Wi-Fi data collection system is basically failing. It's an old technology that's not going to last much longer. Huh. So they're, they're in a, an interesting pose. The other thing the pandemic has done, you know, from the standpoint of future planning, I and mean, Nick is I don't know if Nick is still here. He may have dropped off. But from an emergency standpoint, this is um, who should get who should get high speed internet access, and is it a public good, and should it go to everybody? And those are going to be discussed. I think you're going to have lots of new discussions in the next two to three years on this whole topic. And um, well, especially when you've got all these kids trying to that's right do remote learning. You've got all these parents also trying to work at the same, at the same time. time. Yeah. Yep. I, I can't even imagine the chaos that must be in some of these houses. Yeah. So anyway, that's sort of my story. And I, I'm sorry I haven't been to the board in a few months. But well, I know when, you're, when, when you need to update us, you let us know. Yep. Okay. So um, you just say do this tonight or not. And uh, you know, if you can get it to me the, by the 29th, that'd be great. Okay, so maybe we can just, we can work on it between now and then and, and get it to you. You have another meeting. I board members, is that board members? Does that sound like a plan that maybe we you could review? We could all review it, and, and when we next meet, um, come up with the letter, and then we can get it to David by the 29th. I think we're going to try to meet not on the 25th because that's a holiday, but the 26th. Yeah, I think that's realistic. Does that sound like a plan? I think it's good. If not, Sounds sooner. Good. I mean. I, I think that the letter looks really pretty good. Fix a couple words here and there. Yeah. And I think it's good to go. Okay. 
Hi, Ruby. Ruby's all wet. She's got full of snow. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, board members? John, did you have anything? Any comment? So, can you guys be quiet, please? Um, so, I do have a question. How much of this is going to be uh, hardwired? How much is anticipated to be the broadcast uh, Wi Fi technology, David? Um, the goal is, you know, wired uh, fiber to every home. In the short term, if we have a five year or eight year plan here, the initial, our consultant thinks that we should be trying to serve as many people as possible as quickly as possible, which would be the, the, the Wi Fi technique. Um, I couldn't tell you what the, how long it would last or how many people would be on that. Um, we probably will be in when we start doing the engineering planning on this thing, which we need this money to do. Um, but the goal, I mean, it really depends on money. I mean, if they're going to give us a lot of money next year, we can bring fiber to every house. Um, they, will they subscribe? That's another question. So, so our installing Wi-Fi for the last half mile or 100 yards or whatever, I think that's what you're going to try to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's not going to limit our ability to get future funding or to, to is, is it going to cause uh, attention to be redirected away from us? I, I mean, five oh, I, I don't, I mean, the district is, you know, that would not be the district's intent. Our district intent is to bring it to everybody. So as long as there was a revenue stream, a revenue positive stream, an EC fiber, which has been in business for eight or nine years, they are cash flush right now. So when they go out, they're bringing fiber to every house, regardless of how many houses are on the road. So, you know, saying, you know, in five years, it'll be a different story than tomorrow. So that's, you know, the best I can say at this point. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I mean, one thing is, you know, if we run fiber by somebody who has Comcast, what's the likelihood of you switching from Comcast to CD fiber? We have no idea. And, um, It'll so be cost and service dependent, obviously, right? You know, I, I, the, the range is going to be fifty to seventy-five dollars. So if that's all you're paying to Comcast, you know, it's a it's a toss-up. So. You know. Is is our is our uh, capacity going to be on par with Comcast, or is it going to be better? It'll far, it'll far exceed Comcast. Oh well, there you it'll go. Up and down. I mean, but not everybody needs that. <laughs> right. Anyway, yeah, no, feel free to send me any questions you have um, anytime. I, I just, I just want to make note um, that we had a fairly, uh, well, we had an ordeal in the northern part of town regarding what broadcasted Wi-Fi internet. Um, and there were- the VTEL? What's that? Yeah, the VTEL one. VTEL. So, VTEL is um, still selling its wares. Yeah, well, I saw my I, I I expect the concerns of the residents back then could be very similar if we're gonna if we roll out Wi-Fi. I, Wi I told I told the consultant that he was doing this. I said you're gonna have a lot of people not in my backyard, and his projects that he's been doing in Western Massachusetts have been on wooden poles, sixty to seventy feet. Um, so a wooden pole sixty to seventy feet is too much for people then it might be tough. But those are going to be little, little, like little dish things or something. It'll be an antenna on top of it, running around it. Um, it won't be beautiful, but it's not going to be, you know, I mean, it, we'll have to see how it goes. I mean, if you don't like 75 feet, then you have to put one, you know, every, <laughs> you, you have to run more, more of them around. It's all, and everything costs money. So, Right. The one, the one thing that we're looking to do is to make sure we have fiber to those poles so that we can actually extend when we when we go forward. Um, so. That's and sort of and not, and one last thing, you you did mention North Callis is underserved. Um, speaking with residents uh, this past, well, yeah, this this winter up that way, 
it, it's horrific. The Wi-Fi. I, I, I think maybe there's a lot of demand on a on a weak line, uh, but when people all get on, they, they basically yeah. shut down. They, it's it's yeah. exacerbating. Like people are just about in tears. You know, so I don't want any, the, I don't want any murders. <laughs> yeah, no. If you're at the end of a DSL line, you're really suffering because right. I don't know where the box is in East and North Catalyst, but like in Maple Corner, there's a DSL box right in Maple Corner. Right. Now, as you go away from that box, it, it degrades totally by distance. And East Catalyst has a real problem up on Batten. I think it's Batten Road, maybe. Yeah, I think you're correct. Yep. Yep. Anyway, let's hope we can get this thing done quicker. I think you can get a priority, you know, yeah. in terms of the first rollout, if yeah, possible. Yeah. And when did you say the first rollout roll out might might happen? The, the plan would be to start the engineering this fall and have the construction next year for the first first whatever. Yeah. And, if, and how would and how would you communicate? How does the how does your board can plan to communicate with the residents? Are you going to do like local um, group meetings? Are you going to do just front porch forum postings? I mean, how you present? No, I, I, you we're going to do that? more than that. And one, one, I mean, really, wherever we're running this thing, we're going to have to go door to door. Okay. And, and you know, if they're not home, we'll leave a door knocker, you know, an explanation on the door. So you're going to not do like Vitel did? No. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we're a municipal entity. That's right. We are. So... Well, it sounds like you've done a tremendous amount of work, you and that and the board. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. I can't, it makes my head explode just hearing about it. Never mind doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot. It's intense. I bet. I bet. Thank you, David. Appreciate your work. Thank you, Rose. Thanks to everybody. Great so, going, you. Any, anything yeah, else for David? Exactly. Anything else for David, folks? Okay. You're. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Just keep us posted and we'll work on this letter. Will do. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, you can stay on if you want. It's so exciting. What's the next topic? Is it the Adamant um, historic yes, site? It's Adamant. All right. I'll listen for that. Yeah. I'm a junkie. All right. Up next, Adamant Historic Preservation Commission. I have to say that I went in and looked at the documents. Thank you, Scott. The pictures are beautiful. They're just, it's such a beautiful little village. And I read a lot of the history. It was it's, it reads like a story. It was, it was really very nicely done. Thank you. So who's going to take the lead, David? I'll, uh, I'll kick it off. Um, but uh, Larry Bush in particular has been very involved with this project. I'll just remind everybody that um, we are a certified local government. Uh, therefore, we're eligible for small grants that are given through the Division for Historic Preservation. And one of the highest priorities for the Division is to slowly get particularly the enclaves of Vermont on the, mm -hmm. national, on the national Register of Historic Places. And we so far have Kent's Corner and North Callis. We have a pending application from East Callis. Oh, I thought we had that already. Well, it's been approved as far as you're concerned, but it has yet to go all the way through the process of being accepted oh, onto, I see. onto the National Register. Um, it's still in the division's hamper, I think. Scott can maybe update us on that. And we uh, now have completed um, the draft for Adamant to join those enclaves on the National Register. Um, we hired a consultant, Brian Knight, who lives down in near Manchester. And Brian, did East Callis. He did such a phenomenal job with that. We had to hire him back uh, because he is very responsible for um, making sure that these uh, National Register nominations read like history. Yeah, and they and do. They read just like a book. He really has. Um, 
with a lot of guidance, I might add, from Larry, who is a real devotee of Adamant. So I'm going to let Larry say, um, say a bit more about this. Larry? Um, yeah, I, I really don't have a lot to say, David, but thank you for um, giving me the, uh, the floor. <laughs> um, this has been a, um, an interesting project for those of us who have um, gone into the details that Brian has sorted out. Um, and we, we think he's put together a pretty good um, history uh, for Adamant within the structure that he has to follow for these National Register nominations. Um, the um, project that we approved has two components, the, the nomination being the biggest part, but there's also an oral history project which we hope to get off the ground by this summer, which would complement the, um, the nomination document and the work that's gone in for that. Um, and Brian is also going to do the oral history segment. There will be approximately four people that we will select ultimately uh, to be interviewed. And we have not finally uh, indicated who those people will be, but there's likely going to be someone who can speak knowledgeably about the music school, someone who would speak about the cooperative movement in uh, Adamant, which if you're uh, not familiar with it is an incredible story involving both the co-op and Washington Electric and the uh, the uh, credit union uh, in its brief and somewhat happy life uh, in Adamant. Um, and then uh, someone possibly uh, to um, talk about the tail end of the quarrying operations in Adamant, which kind of... Um, ticked along, I believe, until the late 70s, so that there are still some folks around who uh, know about that. And we, we've talked to a couple of people uh, about, about that. So I'm um, looking forward to that part of the project as well. But tonight, we hope to um, uh, move forward on the um, actual nomination document for the, the uh, National Register. So. Uh, happy to answer, try to answer any questions you might have about any of this. And this is a CL, this is a CLG. So the match is in kind, correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, so this is, I mean, we've done this with, like you said, with North Callis, we did it um, through, for East Callis. And so this is just, it's another one of the same kind of processes, correct? That's yes. correct. We, Kent's Corner was the first. Kent's Corner actually was one of the earliest National Register districts in Vermont. We updated it. That was our very first project. And um, when Adamant is on the register, we it remains only for Maple Corner uh, to be done. And then we'll uh, turn our attention potentially to other projects. And this helps leverage opportunities should they come along for other grants, is that correct? Uh, absolutely. Uh, a good example is the grant that we just got uh, to help in East Callis, which uh, Scott can tell you, um, uh, just knowing that East Callis is a pending National Register District definitely adds a little momentum to the project to save the East Palace General Store. Correct. So board members or anybody else in that's on want to say anything? Tobin, Scott, um, Kate from HPC? I don't know what Kate's role is. Kate is a member of the commission in training. <laughs> oh, the HPC? Welcome, Kate. Nice to have you. Thank you. Hi. Um, yeah, I, I just recently moved to the area. Um, and uh, I'm an art historian um, and an archivist uh, by training and um, was uh, invited to to get along, to, to get involved with the commission. Um, so I've been to the last couple of meetings, mostly um, kind of 
in a listening capacity and am looking forward to uh, continuing and to get further involved. Great, great. Welcome to Callis. Glad to have you. Thank you. Where now? Where do you live? Where do you live? In, where did you move in Callis? Well, so I'm actually in a kind of transitional moment. I am currently um, house sitting um, in East Callis, uh, right down the road from Scott, and um, I'm actually about to move to East Montpelier as of just last week, um, just right on the other side of Adamant. Um, so, yeah. So. And I think, I think if I remember correctly, we have a provision that we can have a member on Callis's HPC, even if they don't live in Callis. Um, so, so, you're not, so you're not off the hook. That's okay. correct. We, we pointed that out. She lives in Greater Adamant. Okay. <laughs> and Adamant is one big happy village. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm, I'm going to be within walking distance from there. So, yeah. Cool. Well, that's great. Board so it's members? been exciting to me. Sorry, and my dog keeps climbing on me. Yeah, well, um, I have I have one of my cockapoos that is currently sitting on my lap. So. <laughs> Mine's a little bit big for a laptop. <laughs> gets very excited by Zoom. Oh. Uh, oh, see, now you can hear her. She's talking to your dog. <laughs> okay, board members, do you have any questions? I'll go, I'll go first. Um, I didn't have any questions. I just um, wanted to thank the Historic Preservation. Um, I read, I spent the whole afternoon reading this whole document from beginning to end. I was so enthralled. I really enjoyed it. Um, and then I sent a complimentary email. Um, and I live in Greater Adamant for the past 35 years. Um, was heavily involved in the Adamant Community Club and um, for about 15 years. So um, I just, I was so pleased to read the application. I think it was really well done. And I just wanna thank you. Yeah, and I would second that. I, I didn't think I was gonna like really get into it, but I, I started reading it. And my husband, who's originally from Cabot, used to come over to, there was a thing in the thing in the story about the Patches who lived in Adamat and moved to North Callis. My husband, and his family used to come to North Callis to visit those folks and they used to roll. And this is back in the old days, we wouldn't let our kids do it now. They would get in the tractor tires and roll them down the bank. <laughs> so, so when I saw, oh, the patches, now I, yeah. So that was really charming to see that in there. That's great. Thank you for your love note, Rose. Oh, you're welcome. You're and, welcome. Uh, and I didn't send a love note, but you know, you know it's there. <laughs> it's very well. nice. And we, we totally agree, all of us. Uh, Tobin is an excellent uh, writer himself. If this document has benefited from some, some good edits from the commission at large. Yeah, I mean, uh, Tobin wouldn't be an author or anything, would he? Uh, something like that. <laughs> Thank you, Tobin. If you want any um, contact information for Mike Guerin about the quarrying part, his father owned the um, Adamant Granite Quarry. Um, I think his father was one of the last people to own it. So he might have some quarrying info. Um, although he lives in Virginia now, um, we certainly keep in, in touch with him regularly. So um, let me know. And also his um, sister and brother-in-law, Pat and Lester Toby, of course, live right on the county road. Yeah, we are in touch with them, Rose. Yeah, with Lester yeah. And, and Pat. And, yeah, um, Lester's uh, offered to to try to dig around in some of the family materials and and provide us with uh, relevant things he could find. Yeah, great. They, they might be involved in the oral history part of the project as well, because yeah. Lester said I think he worked at the guaranteed mine or quarry. Sorry. Um, for about seven years, so. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So and Lester, know? Lester's parents were the king and queen of Adamant, Elbridge exactly. and Lois. Yeah. So what what are you looking for from us tonight? Anything? Um, your approval. Um, if 
if we could have your approval on this document, it will then move to the next stage, which is to the Division for Historic Preservation. And by approval, do you mean something in the minutes or for us to sign something? Uh, I think uh, something, something in the minutes point, would be great. In the minutes is fine. Minute? That'd be yeah. great. In the minutes is fine. All right, so I would make a motion to um, ask that the HPC move forward with the historic, um, and you can correct my grant, my um, words here, the, the um, application to put Adamant on the National Historic Register. Is that what you need? Yes. Okay, is there a second? Second. Dinner. Okay, any further comments or questions? I don't see any little hands up. Okay, all those in favor, uh, Rose, you have to vote. Aye. John? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Cliff? Aye. And I'm an aye aye. <laughs> there you have it. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you it's sound, thank it's you really all. interesting. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Okay, um, next up is the board is going to um, talk about the FY21 budget. Anybody that wants to stay is welcome to this exciting and entertaining event on a Monday night with snow. <laughs> it is now accumulating on the ground, I have to just tell you. <clears throat> so the board is very aware of the financial situation that might occur or probably will occur as a result of the pandemic, um, more likely to affect everybody in FY21, which begins July 1st of this year. And I'm sure we've all heard ad nauseum all the stuff that's going on and the potential for financial impacts in many, many ways. People's jobs not coming back, um, you know, what it's just the financial stress that it's putting on everybody, which will then trickle down to towns and state government budgets. So the board is very aware of that. And we're looking at opportunities where we might um, be able to reduce um, our budget. And the legislature just passed S-344, which allows the board to make changes to the budget if we're making reductions, which would re overall reduce the property tax rate that would be set. Um, so that's kind of the background of it. And the board has looked at the FY21 budget that's in your town report. And we've come up with some areas of some things that we might be able to do to get garner some cost savings. Our next goal is to then is to invite members or chairs and members of the various committees commissions to come and talk to the board um, about our ideas and where you think um, within, for instance, the cemetery commission at their meeting next, um, we asked them to look at their budget and see where they might find some opportunities for savings. Are there projects that could be um, put off to reduce the overall cemetery budget. Um, we're looking at um, maybe some savings where in painting the town hall, maybe we don't paint the whole town hall um, right off. So we're looking at things like that. Where can we save money to, to help um, you know, the residents who are gonna be struggling uh, most likely um, you know, we've looked at uh, we've looked at reserve funds. You know, could we put a little less in some of these reserve funds than was than was originally approved by the voters at town meeting? So that's where our heads are at. Um, so if anybody would like to jump in, Larry, Tobin, Scott, members from the public, would it help if I maybe pulled up that spreadsheet or we can sure. talk about it in general terms? Sure. Uh, so people can see some of the things we looked at. Let me see if I can pull it up. And we're not saying this is a done deal. These are just things that we went through quickly and said, where can we, where can we save some money? 
Um, and we started off with ourselves to, um, for the select board, not to take their stipends. It's not a lot of money, but we're trying to, you know, lead by example of, you know, we're in this too. We're all in this together as the saying goes. So this is just a, a quick look at, you know, where could we save some money? So that's kind of where we're, that's where we're, where we're headed. And Denise, I just want to underscore the point that you just made that this is a this is a first run. We might decide um, we need to save more. We don't need to save this much. Right. I don't think we even looked at, we didn't even get so far as really figuring out what does this mean to the tax rate? What is it? How does it compare to last year's budget? We didn't even do that much. So no, I mean, where this is really, thank you, Sharon. This is really in its infancy. We just felt the need as a board to be very cognizant and caring about the taxpayers and what they're going to be up against. You know, this is a great community. Everybody cares about everybody. Um, and I think it's in our nature to be looking at things like this to figure out what can we do. So anyway, so that's, that is like, this is that, what you see is like the very first look. And like I said, it's not a done deal. Um, you know, that could change and you might, and you folks take out your town report, look at it yourself. If you have some feedback of, you know, why are we spending this much money on this or could we save on that? Please let us know. I mean, we can use all the help we can get. Does that make sense, everyone? Yeah, and I'd like to just point out, like we, we didn't uh, pick out the SWIM program uh, for a cut. We were going to ask them if what they expect to see this summer in terms of needs. Um, at the time of our conversation, we, when we discussed, for instance, the SWIM program, uh, the edict from the governor's office would not have allowed a SWIM program were that to have continued into the summer. So with the changes uh, that have occurred over the last even week, um, I, I expect the SWIM program could go forward. So these are the kinds of things that are moving pieces that will affect how we eventually uh, decide on what, where to cut and where not to cut or where we can accrue savings and where we would not be able to, so. And I, I think the first three items are, um, we've all agreed on the invasive species program isn't going forward anyways. It's only $250, but it needs to be on the list. Um, like and, I said, you know, we just, we just pulled things out of the budget. Let's talk about it. Right. And, and just for clarification, the discussion around the town hall, uh, we have a plus or minus sense of what it's going to cost to, you know, uh, scrape prime and finish, coat paint that town hall it's in the 50 to 60 thousand dollar range um but there it, there is existing paint on the older clapboards and areas that have not been either uh added or uh repaired uh the lower clapboards due to the foundation work and other work that's been done have been replaced and only have primer on them. And so when Denise was uh, earlier on saying that, well, maybe we would, we could get away with only painting, you know, portions of the town hall uh, this year until we see ourselves through the situation. Th those are the kinds of things we were looking at. The, the stuff that has primer on it that needs to get a finished coat on it, get that done, um, the, new, the new addition in the back, get that done and um, and then we'll come back and, uh, and this is these are ideas we would want to pass the town call committee um, those involved in that but um, those are some ideas where we might be able to spread spread the costs of that over a, a few fiscal years so it won't be so painful and the town hall the friends of the town hall committee are aware um, that this is a possibility the RFP that's going out, has some language in it that Cliff can, if he wants to, can tell you what that is to give us some options going forward. 
Yeah, what I can say there is um, we are hoping to uh, publish that RFP uh, this week. And as we enter into discussions with uh, contractors who respond to it, we're going to ask them to present us with some outside of the box thinking as they have a chance to size up the project. Could it be accomplished in phases? Um, so we break up this cost over uh, you know, a couple of years or whatever. We also, um, as I mentioned in an email I sent out to friends of the town hall, have looked at this idea of just doing the bare minimum to, to preserve uh, the exterior and then um, come back to the RFP at a later date. So the language that's been added to it, um, once we get to the final draft, which we're just about there, that really addresses all of these ideas. Okay, is there any, any questions? Okay, somebody in the public sounds like they have a comment. I can, I guess you can take this spreadsheet down now, Cliff, I can't see everybody. Okay. It, is, that a, is that a dog or a public comment? I, that's, that's Ruby's comment. She says, just make sure you have enough money to make homemade dog food, that's all. She's Anybody to tell else? Us it's rough. Huh? What did you say, Cliff? She's trying to tell us it's rough. Yeah, it's a rough life around here for the dogs. Yep. Okay, Scott or Larry or um, Nick, did you have or Tobin any comments on this? No comments. Okay. All right. So that takes Thank us you. on to. Thank you guys for watching over us like that. Good We're work. We're trying. It's a, it's a good effort. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Oh, we're not, we're not done, Scott. No, <laughs> we're not. Well, thanks for the thanks. vote of confidence, though. Thank you. Appreciate it. We have, we mm -hmm. have considered calling all roads class fours and maintaining them at that level, Scott. Scott would like that. <laughs> Larry? Um, yeah, if I might, I just had a question. The, the list that uh, Cliff put up um, indicated, if I understood it correctly, that the wood chipper that was approved uh, is not on the chopping block, so to speak, right? I mean, no, it, it is. It is on the. It is on the list. Oh, okay. So that meant that it was was going to be removed. Okay. Um, well, uh, it's up for discussion. It's perfectly understandable. We are quite possibly. Uh, well, although I don't think we're going to see serious emerald ash borer um, destruction soon, but Callus is right on the doorstep. If it's not here, it probably is here. So uh, eventually that wood chipper could be an important part of the um, town's um, need to deal with the dead uh, ash trees along the roads. So good point. point we're going to need it. Yeah, good point. Thank you, Larry. Anything else? Are you ready to move on? Um, Cliff, do you want to do you have any IT update? Uh, nothing major. It's pretty much uh, as reported last time around. We're just waiting for the equipment to come in uh, to do the get the backups set up in the server, a replacement server set up before we schedule actual dates to make that happen. And I already um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all we got right now. Okay. All right. Um, I was just going to give an update that I, I, I talked to Daniel Kearney, Kearney, who is now the, the main contact for the swim committee, just because I got to thinking about the whole thing with summer camps and social distancing and all that to ask them if they had thought about, you know, would they be able to even go forward with the swim program and they're still that's still under consideration and review by the swim committee whether or not they can successfully pull it off and also um they're having they're really trying to find an instructor which is not i guess been an easy task because the only place to go now for training and i think he said it was like hampton beach area 
So if somebody wanted to be certified to be the person doing this swim instructor, they would have to go pretty far away to a pretty maybe undesirable place at the moment to get training. So they're weighing those two different issues. And at some point, you know, at some point they'll make a decision and get back to us. But, you know, it might, a swim program might go forward or it might not. And, you know, we'll have to deal with that then. Um, I think, I think that was it. Was there anything else? It seems like there was something else I had on the agenda, but I can't remember now what it was to update on. Larry? You're on mute. Larry, you got to unmute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wanted to say good night. Thanks, everybody. I'm, I'm out of here. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Tobin. Larry. Denise, you had something about um, location for June 24 tax sale under your oh, right, executive right. or your chair. Um, we already, we already chair. approved the tax sale in June. You'll remember at a meeting several meetings ago. I think we were okay. still meeting at the office. But it's likely that the tax sales will be held at the town hall, just so that stuff can be social distanced better and easier. We don't have the certificate of occupancy yet. So, but and a notice needed a notice needs to go out if we're still going to do them in June. Remember, we pushed it to June. It was going to be sooner, but we pushed it to June. Um, and I don't remember. I, I missed the last couple of meetings before while well, we were still in purpose person, but that's yeah. neither here nor there. Right. And um, I think, so we moved, we, we tried to give more opportunity for folks to pay. So we're still, we, we're not there yet, obviously. Right. So, um, one, one taxpayer who is delinquent has promised to start paying by May. I think I, think it's 16th so that will be a good thing and that's one of those people who yes. we uh, understand the hour cycle and that life yes mm -hmm. yep and in part why we moved things push things out um so i think that's it other than um i'd like the board to go back into executive session if there's nothing else we agreed to meet, so Katie has it in the notes, because I don't think she was on the call then. Can you do, um, we decided we don't, we're not gonna meet on Memorial Day, Katie. Are you available on Tuesday to do the, to join us? Okay. Um, and I think that's it. I've already signed and emailed Nick the CVRPC document. So Ruby, come here Ruby, sorry. Having a dog is like also having a kid, you know, they want your attention. Um, so unless there's anything else, we could go back into executive session. If there's somebody who would like to make a motion. Hi, Ruby. So move. Second, so, John seconds. Okay. Vote, Cliff. Aye. Sharon. Aye. Sharon. Aye. John. Aye. And I'm an I. Thank you so much, Katie. Enjoy the snow. Bye, Katie. I know. <laughs> Bye, Katie. Bye, Katie. And you have a way to turn off Orca, right, Cliff?